Let's talk about fashion a little bit. You've been involved in several fashion lines from Glitter Boy to Peyton to your most recent endeavor, which is uh, the Zoo Boutique. Yes. And you've even collaborated with jewelry designers like Tarina Tarantino for uh, Tokyo yes. Hardcore. And, yes. um, and one of the most popular threads on the Despair Faction site is the style fashion thread. So obviously your listeners are also really into fashion and style. Um, what have you got in the works right now as far as uh, fashion and style is concerned? Zoo Boutique is, is my current endeavor that I am actually hands-on in. And it's actually, um, this is actually the first label that has continued. And it is because I'm doing it with my very close friend. And that's it. <laughs> So it's just the two of us, and, you know, I have great aspirations and dreams of, of runway shows and, and you know, tailored suits and cute yes. dresses. I would love to right see now we, tailored suits. Right now we make limited edition t-shirts. All the shirts are our own custom bodies, a very lightweight material. They're all numbered, and they're all inspired by things that I love, whether it's the vegan shirts which, you know, you've seen probably the, the dancing, let's all go to the lobby style hot dog, but he's dancing <laughs> in a little pool of blood. Yeah. And there's a couple yeah. flies around it and it says murder. Our motto is, if you don't know, you weren't meant to, because um, we make shirts with really, really subtle references. For instance, there's our first shirt that we put out was a big happy bee, and it says, who wants honey, which is a Smashing Pumpkins reference. Oh. Chair block. So it's that kind of thing, especially in a time when you know, you've got so many people walking around in their Joy Division shirts or in their Ramones t-shirts, whereas, you know, 20 years ago or 10 years ago even, that meant that you and that person had something in common, but now it means that, you know, they shop at Urban Outfitters or whatever, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And not that that's a problem, but it just sends mixed messages. So these are the subtle t-shirts for the connoisseurs of both fashion and music at times. Um, we have some designs coming out that... Um, are are subtle straight edge um well they're not i mean they're they're, they're subtle anti anti-drug references um, <laughs> actually they're not even subtle they're just and they are in fact they're anti-drug um <laughs> we have an homage shirt actually a, an homage that we designed that's going to actually be very limited there's only 22 of them oh, wow. that are coming out um any day now that's exciting. That's exciting. I won't say who it's an homage to, but it's someone that was very dear to me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. The rumor mills have started already. Started. Yes, yes. I, I, would, I would love to make the perfect suit, the perfect vegan leather jackets, the perfect, the perfect faux fur coat for the ladies or the men. I would love to work all the way to be the, the humane Dior. <laughs> that that is, a, that is a, great, a great goal. And, you know, we don't have a male a menswear version of Stella McCartney and it's I, a, it's I've heard culture. rumors that Stella's gonna do something for men that would that would be my dream come true how do you feel about people uh, you, you were mentioning faux leather and faux fur how do you feel about people who wear the real thing who people uh, who wear you know the the skins and body parts of animals I, I, I feel it's it's barbaric I, I it actually blows my mind. I mean, it's like a throwback. It's 2009. You know, it's not nine. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> it's to it's totally unnecessary. And it's, I mean, it's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I noticed that you mentioned uh, hedonism as one of the aspects of your Zoo Boutique line. And that's really mm -hmm. interesting because conscientious hedonism is something that I talk a lot about on the blog. And I feel like uh, one of the things that keeps people from making ethical decisions is uh, as far as what they're eating or wearing, um, is a misconception that in order to do good, you have to be miserable. Hedonism is simply doing things that make you happy and doing things that make you feel better. Doing it ethically when it's not at the expense of someone or something else is nothing but positive. You know, I mean, that just makes a happier world and a better world when you're when you're not when you're not hung up on these absolutely insane mores that are completely dated and obsolete mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you can you can be a, a greater fuller person yeah. now certainly yeah. hedonism 
at the expense of the life of an innocent creature, such as a mink who go who gets murdered to wear your fur coat, you know, so that you have your fur coat is 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 totally unacceptable and selfish. With conscientious hedonism, you can derive more pleasure from knowing that your actions are, you know, giving back, that it's not just about taking for yourself. It's not about selfishness. It's about, right. it's about, you know, getting more out of giving back. And uh, that goes back to a lot of philosophies. And I think that it's something that can be incorporated into pop culture. And, uh, and it's great that, that someone like you uh, is, is actively doing that. Um, Thank you. You've been all over the world. What is yes. the most amazing meal you've ever eaten where was it what restaurant was it there are two okay there it's there are two restaurants in the world millennium in san francisco mm -hmm. and candle in, in in new york city those are very good choices how about you my favorites oh my god i'm i'm a total i'm a total foodie i i, I don't know if i could ever make that decision i do love Candle 79, and I do love Millennium, and I and I do love... Have you been to Madeline's Bistro in Tarzana? I love Madeline. Did you, did you ever have, like, an aha moment when you, like, <laughs> when you made the connection and you suddenly were like, wait a minute, you know, what am I doing? I was vegetarian for two years before I actually made the commitment to stop half-assing it and go vegan. And it's something... I went vegetarian um, to live a healthful live, you know, a healthful life to be as healthy as I possibly could. And I knew that if I really wanted to be healthy, eating a bunch of cheese that is filled with pus that came from the milk of a different species was not the way to go. <laughs> and I also knew that if I really cared about the animals that, um, to support their torture was was wrong. So it took me it took me a couple of years to actually commit myself to the movement. I read Diet for New America, which is a great book, which I recommend to anybody who is interested in going vegan or vegetarian or who's just really interested in their health. When you really pay attention to what you're eating, what is in it, where it comes from, it's it's monstrous if you're talking about actually eating flesh and simply loathsome if you're talking about drinking milk. It's it's yeah. pretty straightforward. I mean, is. the problem yeah. is, is that, as you know, and everyone knows, no one thinks about it and no one wants to think about it. It's amazing mm -hmm. how many people consider themselves animal lovers. Everybody, everybody's an animal lover. I love animals. I'm a lover, yeah. I love animals as I bite into my hamburger. But, you know, That's when why. you make that connection that, you know, what's the difference between my cat and dog and, you know, this pig or chicken or cow or even, even fish? Um, yeah. It, it's 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 an ethical you know dilemma you can't you can't rationalize that disconnect you can't 